Praise the Lord, everybody. Today is August the 5th, a Saturday. It is now 11, 11 a.m. I wanted to come on and do this video. I had a dream last night, very vivid, very strong, and it stayed with me. I'm not one that have many dreams to remember. Normally, I have a dream. I can remember bits and pieces, and I forget it. But there's only probably a handful of dreams in my lifetime I can remember that stuck with me vividly, that is like shook the way I see things. And even though it wasn't biblical, and I, I wondered about that because it wasn't the way the scripture talks about, but it made me think about the generation of life itself, about how the rapture is on the way. And uh, I had a dream that the rapture took place and God came to get us. And there was loved ones and friends that I saw that didn't make it. And it was a glimpse of family. It was a glimpse of friends, but it was a particular friend, which I would not call a name, that stood out. And I can remember them looking at me with their wife and saying, man, what about us? And I was like, I'm sorry. And kind of woke up as we were preparing to leave. So I don't know how the story actually went. I can't remember all that part. But what I do remember is that was a presence of knowing something was finna take place. It was a bunch of us together. It, it was a lot of events led up to this point, but that those points are vivid in my mind. But there was a point that led up to this where we felt like something was finna happen, like God was coming. This was the day God was coming. And it was like a visible force was pushing all the saints to one general location. Like God was preparing to come get us. And uh, it was unsaved and saved alike gathered in this area. But we know the Bible said that's, uh, that was a, that's gonna be a, a trumpet sounds and the rapture gonna take place. And, and there was the people that kind of get it mixed up they talking about this the second coming. Amen. This, this is the, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ too. But this part of his coming, the world won't see him. Amen. The scripture said we shall be called up to meet him in the sky. The world will not see him. We're going to just disappear. Amen. The world going to be still left here to go through the tribulation period. But the second coming when you shall see him and me, because I'm coming back with him, on the horses of glory, coming back to fight the battle of Armageddon to set up the millennium kingdom. So people get those two mixed up. When they said his second coming is when he come back to settle the score on earth in a sense. But that's going to be a coming that nobody's going to see, but the saints just going to disappear. Madness in your mind, right? You're on an airplane. Plane coming in for Atlanta and the pilot save and the rapture take place. The plane's still going to crash. People still going to die in sin. Or interstates, cars, thousands of cars on the interstate. And people that are filled with the Holy Ghost are going to disappear. But these vehicles are still going to be moving. Construction cranes being operated by saved folks uh, save folks saving somebody from drowning whatever case it's going to be so many different multiple situations where the people that are saved is going to be raptured up out of here caught up in a moment a twinkling of an eye and those that are not in christ those that have not received the baptism of the holy spirit those that have not received salvation forgiveness of their sins they're going to be still here and those people are going to disappear just like that just like that and that's a difference in the two comings of christ the second coming when he brings the saints back with him, ah, why, me, and we come back to fight the battle of Armageddon, amen, to set up the Millennium Keys for a thousand years. It's all in Revelation. It's all in the scripture. You have to read it, study it. I don't proclaim to be a professor of it. I claim to know what the Holy Spirit has shown me. So, but this dream I had was not biblical in that sense, but it had the biblical meaning of God is on the way back. So when you look at it, we all gather in this place like this invisible force is pushing us to this one location and it's like a rooftop it started out like everywhere but then it's like we end up on a rooftop and this the part hallelujah that's so astounding to me so vivid and so real it's like we knew something was finna happen gosh i just get chills thinking about it but we knew something was finna happen and all of a sudden we heard a sound of many horses you got it and saw <laughs> just ain't no good imitation but a sound of many horses and it was coming from heaven and all of a sudden it was chariot of horses big long line of horse and an angel swooped down in front of the horses and he swooped down and hoovered over us and began to release an anointing of God it's like, it wasn't the trumpet sounding but it was similar to the sense of you felt the glory of God. You felt something was going to happen. So it bothered me because it wasn't lined up according to scripture. But you can feel what God is saying. I am on my way back. You better get ready. And when the angel did this, golden rings fell toward the people 
that received salvation. And they took the reins, put it on their fingers, and they was caught up. And I don't know what that means, but it happened like that. And so I remember like this invisible force pushing us all to this one area. Like we couldn't stop going toward this one area. And I remember for a split moment, I was doubting. Did I make it? Did I do enough to make it? And I began to worry a little bit because the rings was falling and different people was receiving the rings and getting their rings and shifting over and being caught up. And I was sitting there like, did I do enough? I got worried. But the glorious sound of those horses from heaven, what that represent, I don't know. But you can hear them coming from heaven with a loud sound of horses. <laughs> and they coming. And all of a sudden you see this swiftness come down. And an angel flies in front of it to lead the way. And the angel can, and it hovers over us. And then all of a sudden, there appeared a ring that dropped down in front of me. And it was my ring. And I put the ring on my finger and I began to cry. I began to praise God. I said, oh, I made it. God, I thank you. I made it. And as I was shifting over to be caught up, I looked and I saw one of my friends. And I saw their faces. And they looked like, what about us? And I remember saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And whoosh, I was caught up and I woke up. And that dream was so vivid. It was so real that it shook me. And I woke up at 4.30 to go pray. And as I was praying, as I normally pray for my children, my spiritual daughters, my siblings, my spiritual uh, siblings, uh, my Glide family, my church family, praying for the Facebook ministry, praying for the YouTube ministry, the TikTok ministry, just praying for people in general, praying for those that are lost and less fortunate, praying for the leaders of the world, leaders of the spiritual world, praying for Jerusalem, praying for the Muslim nation, which that none should perish, all come to repentance, praying for, praying for every denominator. As I was praying, before I got into that format of praying, I began to thank God that I made it. I thank God that in that dream, I made it and I'm on the right track. And I said, Lord, keep me, Lord. Keep me on the right track. I will tell the truth no matter where I go. I will tell the truth no matter what ministry you put me in. I will tell the truth. Keep me on the right track because I believe without equivalent of a doubt, you are soon to return. I believe that. I believe you're on your way back. And I'm trying to help prepare people for your coming because I believe and I'm fighting for myself to stay right. At the same time, I'm fighting for so many others to stay right. I'm praying for so many others. I'm ministering on Facebook. I'm ministering on YouTube. I'm ministering on TikTok. I'm ministering on Glide. Three different channels on Glide. I'm ministering, trying to get people lined up with your word, compelling them to come, begging them to come. But the scriptures say, except the spirit draws them. I want to see men save God. I want to see them not perish and be lost and stuck here when the rapture take place or die and die in their sins and lift their eyes in hell. So that became my desire to see the glory of God change. And that that dream, it's I guess I don't I'm trying to figure out how to put it in words. But that feeling I had, knowing that something was about to happen, and then to hear that sound of those horses swoop from heaven, and to see that angel swing in, and I couldn't visualize, I couldn't see the angel what it looked like. It was just an image of whiteness coming down, swooping in front of the um, chariot and stopping where we was at. And then to see golden rings fall to her, like cloven tongues fell on each one in, on the day of Pentecost, golden rings falling on each one. And when it, and I'm sitting there like, did I make it? Lord, did I make it? And then when that golden ring fell by my face and I was able to reach and grab it and put it on my hand, I began to cry and thank the Lord saying, Lord, I made it. Thank you, God. I made it. I made it. I made it. And that dream stuck with me. If I had to get anything out of that dream, which I hardly ever remember dreams, is that God is letting us know because you don't believe. A lot of people don't really believe. We hear it and we say it. Yeah, I believe. But our actions say we don't believe. Our actions dictate we don't believe that Jesus is truly soon to come. Jesus is coming so soon that living your best life is going to be the life you're stuck with. And when Jesus come and the rapture take place, 
The Antichrist is going to bring peace to the world. He's going to have the world deceived. And by the time they realize he's not the best thing since peanut butter, he's going to stand in the temple and declare himself to be God. The mark of the beast is going to be here. The one world government is going to be here. The one world religion is going to be here. You're going to be hunt down to take the mark, to be killed if you don't. You're going to be hunt down for the saying that you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to feed your families. You got to feed yourself. You can't buy, sell, or trade without the mark. And But you know if you take the mark, you can never make it into the kingdom of heaven. That's going to be suffering. That's going to be torture. That's going to be pain. People are going to be hunted like dogs, living in the wool. You think it's cold outside now, and you got a heater to go to inside. You think it's hot outside now, and you got an air conditioner to go inside. Just wait till you're living off the wood. Most of us can't fish or hunt. We're going to be stealing crime after crime after crime just to survive. When all you got to do is get right, church, and let's go home. Get right now. Get right today. Get right while you got breath in your body. Tomorrow is not promised. No, you're not perfect. You're not going to be perfect every day. You're striving for it. You may not make 100 every day, but you can get a 99. You can make the effort to get right. And every day is a repentance day. Every moment is a repentance moment. Every hour is a repentance hour. There's something you thought, said, or done. You say, Lord, I'm sorry for that. And mean it. And God is faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful and justified. He justifies us through his blood to forgive us for our sins. All you got to do is stay in right standards. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. You got to do it. And then I was confirmed this morning. I went to the cafeteria and told the other little Hispanic lady that's in the church. I said, you go to the same church, my friend? She said, yeah. I told her what I told her about. She's anointed for this. And she looked at me and just started smiling. She said, you told her right because she's going through what you said. What you spoke over her life, she's going through that. I said, God, I thank you. That's why she was teared eyed. That's why she was like, thank you so much. God is wanting his people to change. That dream shook me. It made me more determined than ever to hold on to Jesus' hand. Hold on to what I know and keep fighting for what I know. Cause that title ain't gonna get me in. I got to put some works in. I got to be faithful to the ministry. I got to be faithful to God. Don't keep putting off tomorrow. Don't keep saying I'm gonna get it right later. Get right while you got a chance. Let's get right, church, and go home. So I'm gonna share this on social media everywhere. I'm gonna share this on Facebook, uh, YouTube, on Glide. I want people to understand God is talking to us. And too many of us still playing church. And too many of us going to bed out with our brethren, anger at each other, bitterness, unforgiveness, um, uh, sowing discord, strife, bite biting, uh, speaking negative on people, speaking about people, gossiping, sarcasm, criticism, negativity, complaining. We got to be careful. Do you think he's going to find you doing that? Or do you think he's going to find you praising the Lord, living a life that is standard, that is holy to him? something to think about. God bless you. I hope this bless somebody. Hope this encourage somebody. I hope this lift somebody up knowing that whether you ready or not, just like hide and go seek, ready or not, he's coming. And so many of us going to get caught short. Just don't let it be you. Don't let it be you. Get right while you can. Support the ministry. Keep praying for the ministry. Keep praying that God's will be done. In Jesus' name, amen.